When the revolution comes. When the revolution comes. The black arts movement was aesthetic and thought of as a black power concept. The people hoped that it would bring about a change of vision for how blacks were seen. They believed that the art could be the key to revising the stereotypes that African Americans faced. They didn't create art to improve the way whites saw blacks, but rather how blacks viewed themselves. It was believed that blacks would never be liberated from racism if they didn't focus on internal feelings of inferiority first. When the revolution comes, when the revolution comes, I'll curly white teeth fall out the mouth that speak of revolution without reference. In 1954, the Supreme Court case Brown v. Board of Education overturned the ruling of the Plessy v. Ferguson case, which allowed states to constitutionally enact legislation requiring persons of different races to use separate but equal facilities. The ruling of the Brown v. Board case stated that the race-based segregation of children into separate but equal public schools violates the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment and is unconstitutional. Of poems and essays. Black cultural centers will be fought supplying the revolutionaries with food and arms when the revolution comes. In 1961, a new tactic was used to desegregate public transportation throughout the South. This tactic became known as Freedom Rides. The first Freedom Ride took place on May 4, 1961, when seven blacks and six whites left D.C. on two public buses bound for the Deep South. As they approached the South, the riders were beaten and the buses were torched. The riders continued to Mississippi where they were jailed, but also inspired dozens of more freedom rides. The Interstate Commerce Commission later prohibited segregated transportation facilities. Will not be under any conditions be an intervention in Cuba by United States Armed Forces. And this government will do everything it possibly can, and I think it can meet its responsibilities to make sure that there are no Americans involved in any actions inside Cuba. President John F. Kennedy ordered an invasion on Cuba to overthrow its leader, Fidel Castro. On April 17, 1961, a Cuban exile invasion force landed at the Bay of Pigs and immediately came under fire. Cuban planes destroyed half of the force's air support and sank their ships full of supplies. In the next 24 hours, the invasion force was crushed by the Cubans, and many of them were either killed or taken prisoners. This government, as promised, has maintained the closest surveillance of the Soviet military buildup on the island of Cuba. In 1962, Cuba and Russia had an agreement in which Russia would give Cuba oil and buy its sugar in exchange to put nuclear missiles in Cuba. An American spy plane secretly photographed the nuclear missile sites. In an effort to prevent a worldwide nuclear disaster, President Kennedy and Khrushchev agreed that Russia would dismantle the weapons in exchange that the U.S. would not invade Cuba. The U.S. also agreed to remove its nuclear missiles from Turkey. Where they found the contained cargoes of offensive weapons to be turned back. On November 22nd, 1963, President John F. Kennedy was passing the Texas School Book Depository as bullets struck him in the neck and head. The president was rushed to Parkland Memorial Hospital, but little could be done to help him. A man named Lee Harvey Oswald was apprehended shortly after the shooting and was accused of assassinating President Kennedy. Oswald was later shot and killed by a man named Jack Ruby on national television. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. On August 28, 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech on the steps of the Abraham Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. 
A speech called for the rights of all people and for friendship and unity among all Americans. On April 4, 1968, King was shot dead while standing on a balcony outside of his second floor room at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. King's death resulted in major outbreaks of racial violence. Sweltering with the heat of injustice. When the revolution comes. When the revolution comes. When the revolution comes. In 1964, the Civil Rights Act was passed, which prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. The passage of the act ended the application of the Jim Crow laws. In 1965, the Voting Rights Act was passed, which outlawed discriminatory voting practices and disallowed the use of literacy tests. And what you and I have to let the man know is we are peaceful people. We are loving people. We love everybody who loves us. But we don't love anybody who doesn't love us. After leaving the Nation of Islam, Malcolm received many death threats. On February 21st, 1965, as Malcolm was about to deliver a lecture at the Audubon Ballroom in Harlem, he was shot 15 times and killed. One of his killers, Talma Chayer, was sentenced to 45 years in prison. Who is violent with us? Poet Gwendolyn Brooks was born in Topeka, Kansas on June 7, 1917. Brooks moved to Chicago at a young age. She began writing and publishing as a teenager, eventually achieving national fame for her 1945 collection, A Street in Bronzeville. In 1950, Brooks became the first African American to win a Pulitzer Prize for her book, Annie Allen. She died in her Chicago home on December 3, 2000. Amiri Baraka was born Everett Leroy Jones in Newark, New Jersey on October 7, 1934. He published his first volume of poetry, Preface to a 20-Volume Suicide Note, in 1961. Amiri Baraka's numerous literary prizes and honors include fellowships from the Guggenheim Foundation and the National Endowment for the Arts, the Penn Faulkner Award, the Rockefeller Foundation Award for Drama, the Langston Hughes Award from the City College of New York, and a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Before Columbus Foundation. Amiri Baraka died on January 9th, 2014. Other writers include Ed Bullins, Eldridge Cleaver, Jane Cortez, Mary Evans, and Lorraine Hansberry. We real cool. The pool players. Seven at the golden shovel. We real cool. We left school. We lurk late. We strike straight. We sing sin. We thin gin. We jazz June. We die soon. Closed window looks down on a dirty courtyard and black people call across or scream across or walk across defying physics in the scream of their will. Our world is full of sound and our world is more lovely than anyone's though we suffer and kill each other and sometimes fail to walk the air we are beautiful people with african imaginations full of masks and dances and swelling chants with African eyes and noses and arms. 
Though we sprawl in gray chains in a place full of winters when what we want is sun, we have been captured, brothers, and we labor to make our getaway into the ancient image, into a new correspondence with ourselves. And our black family, we need magic. Now we need the spells to raise up, return, destroy, and create what will be the sacred words. If I poison the beginnings of your breaths, believe that even in my deliberateness, I was not deliberate. Though why should I whine? Whine that, that the crime was other than mine since anyhow, or oh, you are dead. What is your word? My beautiful black women, I respect the fact that how you react to men in direct acts and unconditional facts. My beautiful black women, I understand your pain and your strain, for the day you birth, us men had gained. My beautiful black women, speak loud, speak proud for all men to understand that you are profound and endowed. Lately, I've become accustomed to the way the ground opens up and envelops me each time I go out to walk the dog, or the broad-edged silly music the wind makes when I run for a bus. Things have come to that. And now, each night I count the stars, and each night I get the same number. And when they will not come to be counted, I count the holes they leave. Nobody sings anymore. And then last night, I tiptoed up to my daughter's room and heard her talking to someone. And when I opened the door, there was no one there. Only she on her knees, peeking into her own clasped hands. The poem describes a depressed man who has lost all hope in life, but hangs on because of what little hope is given from his child. The first stanza shows the man's depression and signs that he has given up by becoming accustomed, enveloped, and beaten by the broad-edged elements, the man has accepted life to have come to that, the disappointments and negatives. The second stanza exemplifies the man's feel for lack of progression. Each night he counts the stars, hoping for a significant change. When they disappear, he focuses on their holes. They have moved on to something different, and he is still there, just counting, going nowhere. The third stanza shifts the poem, as the man now walks light. He tiptoed up the stairs. His child, whom he heard talking, was praying to God. His child, innocent and unscarred from the world, has a brighter outlook on life. He realizes he cannot kill himself, yet, because he must raise his daughter and protect her. The child motivates the man to keep his head up and to continue counting the stars. Of where you have come from, oh my people, oh yeah, oh my and what was your way?